Okay, um, today we're going to cover 11.4, which is the cross product of two vectors in space. And so I'm um, assuming that you've watched the slides so that you can get the information so that you'll see or actually understand the cross product method, like what it is by definition and where why I'm setting up the problems the way I'm setting up. So that information you won't get from this video, you will get from um, reviewing those the lecture slide for 11.4, the cross product of two vectors. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start going through the assignment. So the first one is number one, and it wants us to find J vector cross product with the I unit vector. Um, now, for me personally, I like to write these in their component forms before I go ahead and actually set them up to do the cross product. So for J, that means it's going to be 0i, 1j, and 0k. Um, and then, and these do have to be in space, so they do have to be three-dimensional in order for you to do a cross product. And then i is going to be 1 for i, 0 for j, 0 for k. So there are my... Um, two vectors in component form in space, okay? Now I'm gonna set this up to do the cross product. So for the cross product, we're gonna have i, j, and k, and then whatever the first vector is, all of his components I'm gonna put underneath. And then for i, the next vector, I'm gonna put all of his components underneath that. And so then we're gonna go ahead and find the determinant of this using um, the cofactors by minors. So I'm actually, we do need to use, uh, this row is our cofactors. So we're gonna cover that and that. And so I get one times zero, which is zero, minus zero times zero, which is zero, times the I vector. Then I'm gonna have a minus sign and I'm gonna cover up the J. So zero times zero is zero minus one times zero, which is also zero and the J vector plus cover up the K zero times zero is zero minus one times one is one and the K vector. So I end up getting um, zero I minus zero J plus actually no, a negative one K which can be written as zero, zero, negative one, or it can be just written as negative K. Um, and so how you enter it, um, it doesn't really tell you a specific way to enter it. So I'm assuming that it will accept both forms. So I'm gonna actually try the vector form and see if it counts it correctly. And then the negative J or the negative K, I'm sorry, if it's zero, zero, the vector is not moving toward the X axis or the Y axis. Um, but if it's a negative one in the third component, that means it's going downward one unit. So the graph for mine would be this one here where the K value is going down one unit. So I'm gonna submit and see if it accepts my component form or if it specifically wants it in the, oh, yeah, it did take the component form. So, and if I would have changed this and not written this, if I would have just written negative K, it should have also accepted that answer. So whether it's in vector form or component form, it should still accept your answer, okay? But moving on, we're gonna go to number two. And so for number two, we have I, cross with j. Now notice it's the same two vectors, but the order is different. And so we'll see if we get something different, okay? So I'm gonna set this up. I already know that i is one, zero, zero, and j is zero, one, zero. So I'm gonna fill these in the uh, matrix. And then I'm going to find its determinant. So I'm going to cover up I zero. That's going to give me zero minus J zero minus zero plus one 
minus zero k. And so here I actually end up with zero i minus zero j plus one k, which means in component form it's zero, zero, one. Um, and in vector form, it's just positive k. That looks like I'm running out of ink in this pen, so let me change. Um, let's see where we go from there. Okay. Oh, this pen's not any better. Let's try purple. I was trying to find a pen with adequate ink. Okay, so I guess it's purple that's gonna work. Okay, so that's number two. So in here, again, you can type in the component form or the vector form, whichever one is easier for you. And since it is no X value, no Y value, but the Z value is positive one, it means that I should be going up in Z value, just one unit. So it should be this graph here. Okay, now I'll leave this one for you guys to work on just because I noticed that nothing is red for numbers one and two. I don't want you to simply just type in the answers I get. I do want you to practice um, that cross product. So I am gonna not do number three and number four just because I wanna leave those for you guys to work on, okay? I've done two of them and you can tell obviously that you don't get the same value um, when you're doing plus and minus, okay? So we do not get the same values. The order in which you do the cross product does matter, okay? So we are gonna move to number five though, because number five does have a bunch of numbers in red. So then that means it will change those numbers for you when you're in your assignment, okay? So doing this whole example isn't gonna be an issue because you might get some other random numbers, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down U, but in component form, because again, I prefer component form. I'm going to do four, I am missing J, and I'm gonna do nine for K. And then V, I have five, positive seven, and negative four. And so I'm gonna set up my matrix. And I'm gonna put in, since I'm doing U cross V, U has to go underneath the unit vectors, and then V. Okay, so this is for part A. So then now I'm gonna go through this process. So let's see, cover this one up. I get zero minus 63 and I'm covering up I minus negative 16 minus 45 J plus um, 28 minus zero K. And so we get negative 63i, this would be a plus, and I think that's 61j, but let me grab my calculator just to be sure. Um, negative 16 minus 45, and then you change the sign, I do get plus 61. And finally, plus 28k. Now again, you can enter that or you can enter the component form if that's faster for you, okay? So either one of these two answers is correct. Now B, we're going to set that one up, but it's V cross with U. So I'm actually going to be putting the V underneath the unit vectors and then the U underneath that. So then I get 63 minus zero, and then I get 45 minus a negative 16. And then I get zero minus 28. And so I do get 63i, that would give me negative 61j, and then I get negative 28k. So I can either enter that or its component form. Okay, so and then we have to do V cross V, which I will do on another page because I've run out of 
room, but let me enter this 63 I plus 61 J plus 28 K. And do make sure that you're using these vectors with the bold and not typing in I, J, and K. Because if they're not bold, it's not gonna count it as a vector, okay? So do make sure that you type that in there correctly. If you wanna stay away from using the letters, then just um, type it in, in component form and you'll be fine. Okay, so the last one is V cross V. So flip over and we're gonna do part C and that's gonna be I, J and K. And then V goes underneath five, seven, negative four. And because I'm crossing that with another V, I'm gonna write five, seven and negative four again. And then we'll go through this process. So we get negative 28 minus a negative 28. The second term is always a minus. Um, then we get negative 20 minus a negative 20. And then 35 minus 35. So we end up with zero I minus zero J plus zero K, which is literally just the zero vector, okay? So in here, I'm gonna go to vectors and I'm gonna type in this. I'm gonna put zero in there because it is the zero vector. I wanna hit submit just to see if it will accept that answer like that, or if I have to type it in component form, zero, 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 okay? So let's see if that will work. Just wanna see if number five will be accepted. So number five, no, it didn't. It says your answer cannot be understood. So I wanted to make sure. So if you're trying to type in the zero vector, make sure that you do zero comma zero comma zero. And then now let's check it. So it does like the component form. The last thing I'm gonna try is zero and I highlighted it and I'm gonna bold it. And let's see if it'll accept the print, right? Of the zero vector. See, it didn't like it. So if you have to enter the zero vector, make sure that you enter it in component form. It doesn't seem to be liking any other version of the zero vector. Um, Okay, keep going. So now we're gonna move on to number six. Number six has an extra little piece of information. So we'll definitely cover that. So we have u equal to six, negative one, zero, and v equal to negative two, seven, zero. And so they do want me to find u cross v. So u goes first and then v. Zero and zero, zero and zero, and then 42 minus two, which is going to give me zero for I, zero for J, and then 40 for K. So I'm going to type that in there. Um, zero comma zero comma 42. And then now it's asking us to determine if that cross product is orthogonal to both U and V. I think by definition, if I remember correctly, it should be orthogonal to both, okay? So it should be this. Just by definition, I think cross products are supposed to be orthogonal to both of the unit vectors that you crossed with, okay? So let's just make sure, so U, is six negative one zero. We're gonna dot product that with what we got for the cross product. And so then we'll multiply the first component, multiply the second component, and multiply the third component, and we do get zero. And we know that if you 
dot product two vectors together, you do get, if you get zero, it is orthogonal, okay? So now let's try the other one. Um, v and a dot product with our cross product vector. So first products multiplied together, second components multiplied together, third components multiplied together, and we get zero for both, okay? So that means that we're going to um, say that it's orthogonal to both, okay? Um, oh, and I should write this in there. Remember, um, we got the number zero. The answer when you do a dot product is always just a regular number, but when you do the cross product, you end up with the vector, okay? Those are big differences between those two. Dot product gives you a scalar, cross product gives you another vector. And that vector just happens to be orthogonal to both of the two vectors that you crossed with, okay? So this one I will not do only because it does not have anything in red. Um, and I've already done an example of it. So you should be able to do this one on your own. Um, following number six as an example, of course, the numbers are different, but you should be able to do that one on your own. Um, this one is different, number eight. Number eight says, find the area of the parallelogram. Well, before we do that, you have to know from the slides that the area of a par parallelogram, I cannot draw that. It's a three-dimensional figure. Um, no, that would be a parallel. That's not another word. But the area of, <laughs> when it's in three dimensions. Um, this thing is in two dimensions, but it's giving you two of the adjacent sides. So as long as you have two of the adjacent sides, you can find the area by taking the magnitude of the cross product of these two adjacent sides, okay? So having just the two sides of the parallelogram will go ahead and give us enough information that we need to find the area of this thing, okay? And it is two dimensions because it is asking me for area and not volume, right? It just happens to be in three-dimensional space, but two-dimensional items do exist in space. Think of a sheet of paper. It's pretty much like a two-dimensional item, but it exists in our three-dimensional space, okay? So a sheet of paper can exist in the, a parallelogram can exist in the uh, space plane. Okay, so let's go ahead and start working with this then. In order for me to find U cross V, I'm going to set up my matrix. I'm going to pipe U in there first because U is in front. And then V next. And so I get 21 minus negative 3. And then I get 49 minus negative 1. And then I get 21 minus 3K. So I actually end up with 24 comma, that's negative 50 comma, and 18. I think 21 minus 18 or minus three, yes, is 18. Okay, but in order for me to find the area, I have to find the magnitude of this vector. And so we know how to find magnitude. That's from previous section. It's the square root of this guy squared plus this guy squared plus this guy squared. Um, and it does say use an algebra, a computer. I don't use computers. You're not allowed to use computers <laughs> with algebraic systems. Now you can do, um, normal determinants in a calculator, but once you have these variables inside your determinant, you can't do that determinant in the calculator. Um, so I'm not sure what they're expecting you to do, but I am going to type all of this in there exactly as it is. Oops, not 180, just 18. And I'm going to hit enter, and it gives me 58.31. Okay, so 
doesn't give me an exact answer. Let me see if it will accept this 58.31. If not, I'm gonna have to manipulate that radical, which is not gonna be fun, but it is what it is. I need you to be able to get these answers correctly, right? See, so no, it did not like that as my solution. So we'll go back. And let me just verify that my numbers are right. So we have 21 minus a negative three, and then 49 minus a negative one, and then 21 minus three. So I do get 18. This is 50 minus 50, and this is 24. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, instead of trying to type the whole thing, I'm just gonna type in what's in the parentheses. So 24 squared plus negative 50 squared plus 18 squared. And let's see what we get there. 3,400. Well, I know I can break that up into a perfect square. I can do 100 times 34. I don't think 34 breaks up into anything other than two times 17. So there's no pairs there to help with the perfect square. So the 100 will come out as a 10 and this will stay in as a 34. So let's try to enter in the exact answer and see if it will accept that. Oops, I don't think I clicked it. Moment of truth, number eight. Yes, yeah, so it does want the exact answer for number eight, okay? So make sure you're entering the exact answer for number eight. But for us, moving on. Okay, so now we're going to go to number nine. And number nine says, find the area of a triangle with the given vectors. Now, it does give you the hint. Remember, if you're finding the area of a parallelogram, which is like a rectangular shape, um, if you cut it in half, you basically end up with triangles, right? So you're just finding half of the area of the rectangle. Um, now it does give me these three points. So you're gonna have to define U and V. So the easiest way to do that is since you do have A as the origin, we're gonna define U as the vector from A to B, which means its components would be five minus zero, which is five, zero minus zero, and seven minus zero. And then we're gonna let V be the vector that goes from A to C. And so since they are sharing, here's A, here's B, I don't know where they are in space, but I'm just drawing them on paper. You're drawing this vector and this vector, which does make them adjacent sides, okay? Um, so as long as you're using two adjacent sides, you are going to be able to find the um, area of the parallelogram, okay? So then that means I would be doing the C components minus the A components. So you end up with negative five minus zero, two minus zero, and then zero minus zero. Once we have U and V, it's just a matter of finding their cross product and then taking the magnitude of it and then taking half of that, right? So let's see, I, J, K. So U goes first, um, V goes next, and then we're gonna do our work. So we get zero minus 14. And then we get zero minus negative 35. And then finally 10 minus zero. So we actually end up with negative 14, a negative 35 and 10. And then if we wanna take the magnitude of this, Bear with me. I'm going to do what I did before because it doesn't tell me to round. So I want an exact answer. I'm going to go see what we get here. We have negative 14 squared 
plus negative 35 squared plus 10 squared. And I get 1521. Now, I don't know about 1521. Um, can I divide it by three? Yes, I can. Can I divide that by three again? I can. And I know that 169 is 13 times 13. So you actually have three squared times 13 squared. Let me just verify that three squared times 13 squared is in fact 1521, and it is. So then we get three times 13, which is 39. I would have never guessed that the square root of 1521 was just a flat 39, okay? I was thinking it was gonna be a half and half, kind of like the last number eight, where some part of it came out and then some of it didn't, okay? But in order for me to find the area of the triangle, I have to take one half of that amount, okay? So I'm basically taking one half of 39, which is 39 over two, or as a decimal, 19.5. So in here, I'm just going to type in 19.5. Cool, okay, now we're getting into the three-dimensional space. So it is telling me that um, for number 10, I need to find, use what's called the triple scalar product, okay? Now that was defined in the lecture notes. And what it is, is if you wanna find the volume of a parallel, <laughs> I cannot say this word, um, parallel peep I I can't say that word. I cannot say that word. <laughs> I try, but I, I just does not roll off my tongue like that. So good luck with saying that word, but I know what you're talking about. It's basically a parallelogram, but in three dimensions. Okay. Um, think of like a rectangular prism. That would probably be a better word. Um, although the shapes might not necessarily be uh, rectangles because they might be slanted a little bit. So it, it will be a basically like a parallel, a three-dimensional parallelogram. Okay. Um, I cannot say that word. I'm kind of, I will probably Google it later to just figure out how I'm supposed to be saying that word. I probably have Googled it every time I've taught Cal3. It's just a funny word. Anyway, this is <laughs> the definition of it. So I'm going to write down what a triple scalar is. So it's u dot um, v cross w. And you do need to take the absolute value of this because we do know that volume is positive. So if you do happen to get a negative value in there, you need to take the absolute value of it, okay? Um, and so since they already give me u, v, and w, I don't need to find them like I did in number nine. I'm just going to go straight into the computation, okay? So before I can do this dot product, I do need to do what's in the parentheses first, just regular order of operations. So I'm going to figure out what that cross product is first. And so then I'm going to write the V vector first, which is 0, 6, 6. And then I'm going to write the W vector, which is negative 4, 0, 4. So let's go ahead and get this cross product done. Um, zero minus a negative 24, and then zero minus negative 24, right? So cover that one, 24 minus zero, cover that one, I get zero minus negative 24, cover that one, I get zero minus 20, okay. So we end up with 24, negative 24, and positive 24. So then I'm going to do the this computation here. So u, which was one, three, one, dot product with 24, negative 24, and 24. And I didn't realize, but this one's in all black, which means I essentially did it for you, but I highly suggest that you try to practice that one. Um, sometimes they'll let you practice another one, let me see if I can go over, but usually, um, let me see. Where's my drop down arrow? 
I want to be able to slide over. Let me just shrink it real quick. Control minus. No, they don't have it. Okay. Well, I didn't want to do this problem for you. So um, definitely try, you know, you can make up your own numbers if you want to, but try to do that one. If I submit it wrong, will it give me the answer? Let's say I say five. Submit the answer. Will it let me try another one? That's what I want to know. Number 10. No, it doesn't let me try another one. Gosh, I really wish it would. I did it and I shouldn't have done it. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but if I do the dot product, I'm going to get 1 times 24, which is 24. 3 times negative 24, which is negative 72. And then 1 times 24, which is 24. So negative 72 plus 24 plus 24 is negative 24. But when you take the absolute value of that, you get positive 24. So the volume of this thing should have been positive 24. OK, so um, I totally. Uh, oh, what still says it's wrong. Why? OK, let's see. So I did one. Three, one, yep. Zero, six, six, negative four, zero, four. So I did my cross product. I did V and W correctly. 24 minus 0, 0 plus 24, essentially. And then 0 plus 24 again. And so then I ended up with 24 minus 24 and 24. So that's 1. And that's negative 72 and then that's 24. Hmm. I do not know why it's counting it wrong. I do think that I submitted it. No, it's still counting it wrong. Hmm. Let's go look at these notes real quick. Because I have a feeling, let me pause it so that you're not wasting, I'm not wasting your time trying to find it, but let me go figure out why it's counting it wrong. Because it should not be counting it wrong. Okay, I found an example in example five in the notes. And I'm noticing that in order to do the triple scalar product, instead of putting the IJKs, they just put U, then V, um, then W. And then they basically just found the, determin the determinant and got it that way. Um, I actually followed the order of operations doing this and I ended up with 24. So I'm curious to see that if I do it using the method that they've done, if I'll get an answer different from 24, I'm not sure that I will. So let me write this down. Um, U was one, three, one, V was zero, six, six, and W was negative four, zero, four. Now I'm going to go back to WebAssign just to verify that those are actually my numbers. One, three, one, zero, six, six, negative four. Oh, I see where my error is. Look at W. W's third component was negative four. That's what it was. That's where my error was. Okay, so let's see. Um, if we cover that up, I actually get negative 24 minus zero. And then I get zero minus a negative 24. And then zero minus a negative 24. So this is actually negative, which means I'll have a negative here, which means essentially these two will cancel leaving me with negative 72, and then leaving me with the positive 72 in the end. Um, and so then it looks like 72 should have been the volume. Um, I will still do it the other way, like the way they found the triple scalar in the notes. Um, 
number 10 yes okay okay so it was my mistake i just had um the wrong sign inside my problem so we always know we have to be super careful with all of those signs right it happens so again i did it over here as well so this um, component should be a negative four so if i do the triple scalar um product let's see if we get the same thing so we're going to cover up this one and it's going to be negative 24 minus zero times the guy that i'm covering up which is one minus the middle one um zero minus negative 24 and then times the three plus cover up this one zero minus negative 24 and then times the one. So we do end up getting um, negative 24 times one minus negative 24 times three plus 24 times one. So we get negative 24, positive 72 and positive 24. Again, those cancel and I do get the positive 72 like they did. Okay, okay, we got it. Now, number 11 says to determine whether the statement is true or false. Um, I will not do that problem for you, but I'll give you a hint. Um, explore the results or vectors defined as so if it's supposed to be true, then that would mean that it works for every vector, no matter what, okay? So if it is true, then it wouldn't matter what I assign um, U, V, and W, no matter what U and V and W are, it would always be true, okay? So go ahead and find out what U cross V is, then go and find out what V cross W is. Or I'm sorry, U cross W. And let me know if this is the same. Okay. If it is, then you're going to say it's a false statement. Because notice that V and W are not equivalent to each other. Okay. If it is not the same, then you probably are gonna have to explore some other option. But definitely investigate with this. Just keep in mind that in order for something to be true, it has to be true for all of the vectors or variables involved, okay? So most likely it is false, but don't determine that until you determine that these are the same. Because if these are the same, according to that statement, those should also be the same, but they're not, okay? Um, always the videos. I'm not going to go over those. So watch these videos and then answer the questions below. Again, watch this video and answer the question below. But other than that, we are done with this section. It may have taken a little bit longer than I expected because I did make two little errors in there. Um, but it should be enough for you to be able to complete this assignment. And as always, if you have questions while you're working through any assignment or anything for this class in general, um, make sure that you text me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay. Um, but other than that, goodbye. Have a good one.